Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom 2017. I'm Brian Altano. I'm here with Magda from the awesome new game, Runer, which Hello. I am completely obsessed with all of a sudden. Uh, so tell me about this game. Well, what can I tell you about this game? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is a, a really fast-paced, brutal action game. Uh, twin stick shooter if you use the gamepad. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for PC, I'd prefer using keyboard and mouse for more precision. But, you know, this game came together as a result of many interests and passions of the people who came together and each one of us put something in. So as you see, the graphics is like really, we try to brought back the spirit of the cult cyberpunk anime. Um, the story is set in the future, but the future where, uh, you know, maybe techn technology is advanced, but the human problems are basically the same. Right. So, uh, yeah. I absolutely love the art direction of this game. The cyberpunk aesthetic is clearly ringing true. Tell me about this main character and his cool helmet that just, can you just project anything on there? Like, what, where is the messaging coming from on that helmet? Uh, so actually the character, the, the, the playable character design was one of the first thing that we've come up with before we started working on the game, like full time. We knew that we wanted to have mask characters that we wouldn't have to show their faces and kind of project something to the players that actually with the mask, the players can put their imagination inside the character and kind of imagine them, each one, you know, everyone for themselves. Uh, so th the helmet was like, we, we were thinking maybe some projection mapping, some uh, a mask or mm -hmm. some animalistic theme. But then uh, Benedict Schneider, who's our creative director, came up with this LED display helmet. And this is kind of like interface, like literally and um, metaphorically. So this is the video that you see is, is a prologue. So you start as a guy who was hacked into killing a boss of a corporation. And all that you see is just this, you know, this message, kill boss, kill boss. Yeah. But Which later on, reassuring. somebody else is using this interface to connect with you and to kind of guide you through what's happened and, you know, what you should do to uh, kind of discover the truth and, you know, take revenge. I'm, I'm, I'm really digging the traversal in this game. It's, it's very quick and snappy. Uh, yeah. It's, it's got this kind of hotline Miami aesthetic, but the way the character moves is completely different. Yeah, basically, like, movement is life in this game. In Hotline Miami, there was a lot of tactics, and maybe you were waiting for the enemies to make the first move. Mm -hmm. Here, if you don't make the first move, they will make the first move and take advantage of your sloppiness. So, like, and like, the Hotline Miami reference might be true to an extent, but then it gets, like, the game is really different. You have many skills, abilities that you can upgrade. Like, you have 13 abilities and you unlock them and can upgrade them and to create your build like you can be really offensive like a killing machine that you mm -hmm. just grab your opponents and just kill them with your melee weapon or gun but you can also unlock the abilities that enable you to manage your uh, combat space like kinetic barriers that slow down the enemies or ghost break with which you can hack your enemies and make them fight for you. So you could actually do nothing. Oh, so you can actually yeah. sort of like play from a distance if you upgrade certain yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah, totally. And the, the funny thing, the fun thing is that you are not stuck with the skills that you unlocked. You can at any moment just pause the game, go to the skill panels, reshuffle your skill points, create like make a totally different build and just go ahead with it and try how it works for you. It's um very, uh, just kind of triumphantly violent, which I love. It's just, it's a video yeah. game, so you're having a, you're having a fun time with it. What yeah. sort of made you guys decide to lean into that much just blood splatter effect in the rest? Well, you know, the game is about killing, obviously, like 90% of the games, and so when you're killing, so do it with style, right? It, like, like we really, when we do something, we want to commit to it, so, the art uh, team, like they, ha they are really ambitious, and they really like until they reach a point where they satisfied, they're, they they will fight until the end, right? So. So their their lust for blood shows no bounds. Yeah, that's basically. like it was. It was. It's been months. Like this blood sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we gotta change the blood. This color is not the color. Like literally, so. Yeah. Yeah. There's this sort of like. This is a work um, of art. Yeah. There's this <laughs> kind of like I don't know. There's something liberating about splattering that much blood everywhere. It's almost got this like kind of Splatoon effect, but much more mature. <laughs> yeah, we could think about that kind um, of. Now, tell me about some of the enemies in this game, because we're seeing sort of different enemy types pop in and out here. Yeah, this is the, the general type of the enemy. They are civilian guards. 
they have different types, like some are melee, some are some have uh, one-handed guns, some have machine guns, some have shotguns. So it's the same with every, like you will encounter many different enemies. Some are super fast, some are augmented and super heavy and have jetpacks, and some just blink from one place to another. And each one of them has a different subtype as well. So like melee and one-handed, two-handed. Um, uh, flamethrowers, like there are over 20 weapons in the game and you can pick up any weapon that an enemy drops. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, and so there's different enemies actually force you to rethink your playstyle because you won't be able to go through the game and finish it with just one setup. They're, like even the, the huge machine enemies that you will encounter that shoot at you with a big laser beam, you, would, you, will, you won't be able to win the fight with the same setup that you fight this light civilian guards or even the heavy exoskeleton I was going to ask you about that because the, the, for the majority of the demo so far, even though we're in this like cyberpunk dystopian future, this dude's running around with just like a pipe. And it's like yeah, he doesn't have any yeah. technology. <laughs> He's just got a pipe. Yeah, you started with a pipe. Well, you were hacked into this. Like nobody, took, like, nobody thought like to make it easier for you. Like, yeah, let's make this dude kill the boss. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and, and, and just just go ahead and do it. So yeah, but later on you will be able to develop your melee. Also among the abilities are the abilities that enable you to enforce your arsenal. So you have like more ammunition or you can convert your energy to ammunition or invest in your melee weapons. So you have the power attack for one-handed and two-handed weapons that, you know, gives extra damage and is spectacular. So are you sort of upgrading your character and then that will kind of trickle into each weapon you pick up or are you upgrading weapons individually? You upgrade the character. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So now, like, obviously Cyberpunk is, there's a huge, it's a huge, like, sort of resurgence for it. I mean, some would say it never really went away. We are getting a new Blade Runner movie. What were some of your influences in, in developing Runer? Well, actually, we never wanted to make a cyberpunk game, and for a long time we thought, like, let's let's not call it cyberpunk because people will have expectations, right. and and so we still get comments like, there's not enough blue or uh, purple color, only red, so it's not cyberpunk. Well, it's not cyberpunk. It's <laughs> a game that we did, you know, from what we thought is the coolest thing ever. And it turned out kind of cyberpunkish because we all loved Ghost in the Shell, the original. I mean, sure. Uh, well, Blade Runner is obviously an important thing. Akira and and all the Japanese uh, anime. So th th you know the spirit of it, you know the sharpness and the atmosphere. It's something that is maybe unique to Asian mm -hmm. art. Not so much for the Western because the Western art goes, especially movies and maybe games, they, it goes most into the psychology and we are not so much, you know, into that. Uh, so, yeah, the cyberpunk is just, cyberpunk is a retro future. It's right. like, but it's actually happening right now. So it's, it makes more sense to investigate the reality and see what's happening and kind of improvise, like, hmm, what might happen with that in, let's say, 50 years, than to go back to cyberpunk and take these ideas that are, you know, old school by now mm -hmm. and try to make something of it because it's already the past of the future that we thought it would be. It's like <laughs> paleo futurism as I yeah, think so the term yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's fascinating that there's like expectations of a sort of color scheme for what cyberpunk is. But yeah. like you said, we're kind of living <laughs> yeah. in a cyberpunk dystopia right yeah. now. So that's uplifting. Um, anyway, so are there bosses in this game that you can take down? Like are there more than just sort of these sort of like base level grunt characters? Yeah, there are bosses. Actually, like the game is divided into three big chapters. So each ends with a very like the most significant bosses, but throughout the game, each type of the enemy has their own boss. So when you meet the guards, you will have the leader guard. Uh, when you th then fight a gang of creeps, the underground psycho gang, they all they also have their special bosses. There are two of them. So each of the of the enemies have their own special individuals as well. So how did he convince all of these, were they just like sort of like gutter punks and street kids? Did he just convince them all to just get out and get bloody? Are the enemies? Yeah, like what's their motivation? They just want to kill this guy? Well, here, like, you know, here he, he, just brought, uh, he just broke into the Heaven Corporation to kill the boss. So they are out there to stop him because <laughs> if they don't, you know, he would just stroll into the office and say goodbye to, mm -hmm. uh, to the boss. But other than that, like, so you are hacked in to do this. Like, it's not your idea, but you're hacked. And it's like, whenever a player, it's like in, in Bioshock, right? Would you kindly do that? It's just in like a play on the thing that in games you're always told what to do, and you just follow the orders. So the players learn to play the game by following the orders. 
and then you learn that you actually were hacked into this and now you should play the real game but even though you're still following the orders so first you're tracking the guy who hacked you and to to get him you had to fight the gangsters who are protecting him so then after you hack him you, you get the you get the idea because they also in, in, in not just hacked you, but also took your brother to make sure you you killed the boss. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. The sort of motivation of the main character here is it, he is rescuing his kidnapped brother. Yeah. So do, how do you sort of unfold that story? Well, I cannot tell you that because that would be a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what can you tell me about the main character that isn't a spoiler? Because like he seems incredibly secretive right now, which I actually like. I don't want you to give too much away. But like, yeah. what's, what's some sort of like little secrets you can give us? Well, for me personally, it's, re it's interesting to hear what the players have to say about the character because this is really inspiring that because we didn't give him a face and emotions, just the basic brutality and he's just a guy who's running and he's good at killing he's you know uh so you can see him as a, a psychopath you can see him as this you know like lonesome cowboy or mm -hmm. you know a, a, a knight who is lost in the world uh it's not really up to us to decide you know because you're the player and you play the game and you feel the game and you're kind of like making this guy who you want him to be or who you feel him to be. I really like that. And I like that you designed a character that c can be sort of like this lonesome guy on this like hero's journey, or he can just be a brutal murderer that just is yeah. out there because it's fun. Yeah. I assume. I've never killed anyone. <laughs> 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 um, so this is coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox, right? Yes. Um, what's it been like developing for those systems? Has it been fun? Well, it's been like we only started porting the game very recently we started in march and it's been insane because originally we uh, we the plan wasn't to release simultaneously but it it just happened it was just pc to begin with right? yeah and yeah. then we we wanted to of, of course port it to to console but then uh, we had this opportunity to to make the simultaneous release and so we kind of like started you know working on it and at, at first we were like oh my god we're not gonna make it but then like Little by little, and yeah, especially the latest month, it was like we were really not sure, but like with the awesome team that we have, like we managed to pull it off, and yeah. It's, it's, cool. uh, it's like kind of, we're at this point where you see the Devolver Digital logo in the corner of something, and it's like reassuring. It's sort of like seeing like, you know, like in the 90s, you would see, you'd find out about record labels when you're like growing yeah. up listening to music, and you're like, okay, if they made this game, then they're also making this game. Like there's sort of like this like, kind of hip, hip violence almost, I would use to describe their aesthetic. Like, what's it been like working with Devolver? Can you just sort of pitch anything and anything goes? Well, no, Devolver, Devolver is great in that they, they give uh, creative freedom to their developers. And this is our responsibility to deliver the good game. They give tons of really constructive feedback and they help organize testing and everything. But it's always up to us to make the final decision and we take the responsibility for the game. So of course, you know, there's a trade-off because, you know, it's your responsibility. So it's your fault if it's right. wrong, right? But then I wouldn't imagine it any other way if, if we have someone, you know, in a suit comes and say like, no, this shouldn't be a too century. Much, this this should be, you know, like something else. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good problem to have is sort of the creative freedom. This, um, that map we just saw for a second there looked fantastic. There's a lot of uh, sort of the way we're seeing different aesthetics come together. Like here you have hand-drawn like character yeah. poses, bringing together cutscenes. Um, how, did, how did all that together? Are you working with a bunch of different artists? No, actually all the handmade art is Benedict Schneider, our creative director. And the environment team is basically two people with the support of uh, the FX animation and technical artists, but they are two guys who are putting it all together. So, yeah, but, but you know, we wanted the game to be a comic book-like experience. So there's also not too much text because it would interrupt the flow of the game. It kind of gives you the hints, but you can also skip it. Yeah, but the different aesthetics, I mean, it all comes together to the same color palette, the same atmosphere. So they are different means, different technologies that we bring together to kind of show the world and bring the players into it. Awesome. Uh, congrats on making such an awesome looking violent as hell game. I can't <laughs> wait to play it. Thank you. Uh, Ruiner is out September 26th for PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Magda, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be Thanks covering games all week long right here for Gamescom at IGN, so stick around.